So let's have a look at solving equations. We're going to start off with uh, an unknown, the x value, on just one side of the equation. So this first step is if I've got x plus 10 equals 15. Remember on all of these, we're trying to simplify the equation by getting x on its own. So I need to eliminate this 10 or get rid of this 10 off this side of the equation. Okay, so if I can make that zero, it will disappear. So if I can circle the term that I want to get rid of, and remember if I put it over the other side of the equation, I change the sign if I change the side of the equation. Okay, so if I change the side, okay, I uh, change the sign. So if it's plus, as this one is, it's gonna convert into a negative. So plus on the side, move it the other side of the equation and convert it to a negative. That's now got rid of that one. I've moved it to the other side of the equation and done the opposite function, the inverse function. So all I've got left on this side now is x, and I do 15, subtract 10, which is just gonna give me five. So my answer for that one is just five. Okay, so take the number that we've got on the equation, move it the opposite side of the equals, and do the inverse function. So if this is negative, it's gonna become positive. If this is positive, it's gonna become negative. So, pause the video, have a go at the one on the right hand side of the screen. Okay, let's see how you got on. So we've got x minus seven, so I'm gonna remove the minus seven, put it on the other side of the equation. By doing the inverse function, I'm just gonna add seven to it. Okay, add seven removes it from this side of the equation, so I've just got x, and I've got minus seven. If I add seven to minus seven, I end up with zero. So if you've got the answer zero, you got it correct. Let's try another one. Okay, so if we've got x minus five and we've got three, see how we get on with this one. Let's move the five to the other side of the equation. And remember it's a negative on the left. So when I move it over the other side, I do the inverse and make it positive. So I've got positive five. Three plus five gives me eight. So x is gonna equal eight. Okay, let's move up to the level of difficulty to <clears throat> the two star. So looking at this one, um, I've still only got the one term on this side. I've got nine x, nine lots of x. So if I've got nine lots of x, remember that nine is multiplying the x. So that's like saying if I wrote it out in full, nine times x or nine lots of x. Okay. If I want to get rid of that one off that side of the equation, whenever I've got a coefficient or number in front of x, I'm just gonna divide by whatever the coefficient of x is. So in this case, I just divide by nine. Nine divided by nine will cancel because it just gives me one. So that gives me one lot of x, which is what I want. I want x on its own. Because I've divided by this side, I'm gonna divide by this side exactly the same. Nine goes into 45 five times. The nine is a positive, the 45 is a negative, so when I've got a positive and a divided by a negative, it's going to give me negative as my answer. So I've got one lot of x equals negative five. Okay. If we look at the next one, slightly different, this was nine times x. The one on the right here is x divided by 10. So the little line there, the fraction line, means divided by 10. So I could write that by saying x divided by 10, could write it in that format as well. So I want to get rid of the whole of the divide by 10 and move it over to the opposite side. Remember I'm doing the inverse and the opposite inverse function of divide by is multiply. So I'm gonna times that by 10. Eight times 10 would give me 80. 
Remember, it's gone from this side because I've moved it to the opposite side of the equation. I've just got x left, so my x equals 80. Okay, I'm going to put two more questions up and pause the video, give it a go, and see how you get on. Okay, have a go at these two. One multiply and one divide. Let's see how you got on. I've got 9 times x, so I've got 9 lots of x, so 9 times x. If I want to remove that one, remember I take it over the other side and I divide by 9. That's there gone, and I've got x on its own. 9 divided by 9 gives me 1, and a negative and a positive will give me a negative. So my answer on the first one is negative 1. Let's have a look at the divide. I need to get rid of the divide by 2, move it to the other side and do the inverse function which is times by 2, x is on its own, 4 times 2 is 8 and I've got a positive and a negative which is going to give me a negative 8 as an answer. Let's look at the 3 star. Slight uh, slightly di more difficult scenario on this one. Again, I've got two questions. One's got a divide on the bottom of the x plus 7 on the left hand side, and the other side has got similar to what we've just done with the 2 times x, 2 lots of x, but we've got a number there as well. So it's just an extra step of working. So let's look at the divide one first. Okay, so I've got x plus 7, that's on the numerator of my fraction so I can't really take the 7 away first I've got to take the denominator away first to make it easier so at each step we're making it easier as we go so let's get rid of the divide by 4 because we can get rid of that all in one go remove that over to the other side and do the inverse function just times in by 4 so I've got x plus 7 equals 2 lots of 4 gives me 8. So I've simplified that and I've left myself with a x and the 7 there. So it's similar to the first one that we've done. Okay, what we're going to do next is we're going to get rid of the plus 7 in two steps. Move that across because it's positive on the left hand side of the equation. If we move it over we make it negative. So I end up with x equals because the 7's now moved and I've got 8 subtract 7 which is going to give me 1 so my answer is x equals 1 and the next one okay, we've got 2 lots of x or 2 times x plus 7 again if I take the 2 the number in front of x the coefficient of x first I would have to divide each of these by 2 which is going to make 7 divided by 2, that's going to give me a, a decimal. 13 divided by 2 is going to give me a decimal. So I could do that, but it would make it a little bit messy if I did. So let's see if we can um, get rid of those. Let's get rid of the 7 first. So if we can get rid of the 7 first, let's move that over the other side. Do the inverse function which is subtract 7 that's now gone on the left hand side I've got 2x on the right hand side I've got 13 subtract 7 which gives me 6 I've made that quite easy now so all I'm going to do is try and get rid of the 2 and remember that's 2 times x so if I move it over the other side I'm going to divide by 2 so I've got 6 divided by 2 that's now gone and I'll end up with 2 goes into 6 three times. Now I could put it and leave it as 6 over 2. That's still an exact answer <coughs> so I could leave it as a fraction but to make it nice and neat if it goes in exactly we can leave it as an integer or a whole number answer. Okay. 
So we've got two for you to have a go at. Pause the video and see how you get on. Okay, let's see how you did. So, the one on the left hand side then. I'm going to get rid of the five first. Move it to the other side and do the inverse function, which means I'm going to add five. So I've got six lots of x equals 13 add 5 gives me 18 and now if I get rid of the 6 move that across it turns into a divide because it is remember 6 times x so the inverse is divide so I'm going to do x equals well 6 goes into 18 3 times so my answer is x equals 3 and the one on the right Let's get rid of that divide first. Move it to the other side and do the inverse or the opposite. Eight times five gives me 40. And on this side, I've just got the X minus six because we've, remember we've moved that five. I can now get rid of the six by saying, move it to the other side of the equals and do the inverse function plus six. So X is gonna equal 46. Okay, let's have a look at the next level. <clears throat> On this one, the only difference between the one that we did in the last step and this one is you can see the x term is a negative. Okay, whenever we're trying to solve, we want everything as a positive, we need to remain and get a remainder of x equals and it needs to be positive x now whether that's positive x on the left hand side of the equation or whether it's x equals in that way and the x is on the right hand side it makes no difference at all it really doesn't matter which way around we write it so the method i would suggest you use is to do the same thing leave the x where it is let's move that five across the other side getting rid of the thing the term that is a further away from my x. So I take it away from the right hand side of the equation because if it's got no sign in front of it, remember it's a positive. So move it to the other side of the equation, doing exactly the same process. So 25 take away five gives me 20. Okay, and remember I've got negative four x. Now, at this point, remember you've got negative four and remember that's multiplying by x if it's right next to x that means it's minus four negative four lots of x so i'm going to take the whole negative four and i'm going to show it on this side in the function of the balancing method where we put exactly the same coefficient on the bottom of the divide so if i divide it from this side them two will cancel because it gives me minus 4 divided by minus 4 would just give me positive 1 which gives me my 1x which is what I want and on this side I'm going to divide by minus 4 now 4 goes into 20 5 times so let's get the numbers sorted first and then have a look at the signs I've got a negative and a positive so that's going to give me a negative 5 as an answer Okay, pause the video and have a go on the right hand side. Okay, let's see how you got on. So the first step, let's get rid of that six. By doing the inverse, it's a positive on the left, so we're gonna subtract it on the right. We've moved that away. We've now got minus four X equals 18, subtract six is gonna give me 12. I'm going to divide by the negative 4, divide by negative 4. Those two are going to cancel and just give me my x. So I divide by negative 4. 4 goes into 12 three times, and a negative and a positive is going to equal a negative. So my answer, negative 3. One last one to have a look at, and that is 
again we're looking at this what's different between the ones we've seen before and this one if we're looking at this one we've got a set of brackets and we're going to just have to expand the brackets first and multiply out the terms that we've got so it's in a nicer format for us to solve okay so we could say minus 2 times x gives me minus 2x minus 2 times minus 2 gives me positive 4 minus times a minus gives me a positive minus times a plus gives me a negative okay and then I've got nothing to do here on the right hand side of the equation at stays as 12 so all I've done is I've multiplied out the brackets I've then got minus 2x and plus 4 so let's get rid of the 4 moving across and doing the inverse 12 take away 4 gives me 8 that's now gone and I've just got minus 2 lots of x on the left and remember I'm going to do that same function whereas I'm getting the minus 2 and point it on the denominator because those two will cancel out to give me x so whatever the number is including the sign as the coefficient the number in front of x we're going to put on the denominator of the fraction and we then move that across to the other side because we've got to do the same on both sides so 8 divided by negative 2 is going to give me negative 4 if you want to pause the video and have a go at the next one on the right let's see how you got on minus 4 times x gives me minus 4x minus 4 times minus 4 gives me positive 16 4 times 4 is 16 negative times a negative gives me a positive equals 28 let's get rid of the 16 move it across the other side and do the inverse function 28 take away 16 gives me 12 and then that's going to equal negative 4 lots of x and I'm going to divide through by negative 4 divide through by negative 4 so x equals 4 goes into 12 three times a positive and a negative gives me a negative <coughs> okay so let's have a look at a different version let's just refresh that one okay now remember the negative 2 at the front there is times in everything in that bracket okay so it's just this is an additional way that you can try and solve this um, if this works better for you then then by all means use this method remember that 2 is multiplying everything in that bracket so I could take that 2 away straight away instead of expanding the bracket I could just say well if I divide by negative 2 those two are going to cancel and just leave me whatever's in the bracket okay so I do the same thing on the other side and divide by negative 2 so 2 goes into 10 5 times positive and a negative gives me a negative then what I'm looking to do is we're in a format where we got that as we started can we get rid of the 3 yes I can by adding 3 to the negative 5 remember change the sign when we change the side of the equation so we've moved it to the right and do the inverse function to change that to a 3 if I'm at minus 5 remember I'm getting warmer so I'm going minus 4, minus 3, minus 2. So that's where I'm going to end up. At minus 2. So x equals minus 2. OK. Now if I wanted to check that, once I've got that sorted, I could take that value there and plug it into the equation I've got at the top so I've got minus 2 and I'm going to substitute in the value of x that we found of minus 2 and then 
we're going to do minus 3 in there. And we're going to see if it equals 10. If it's the correct number, it will equal 10 when we calculate it. So remember using bid mass, brackets, indices, division, multiplication, and add and subtract at the same time. So brackets, let's do the brackets first. I've got minus 2, minus 3. So again on my number line, I start at minus 2, and I'm going to take away 3. 1, 2, 3, so I'm back at minus 5. So I've got minus 2 on the outside, and I've calculated those two added together in the brackets. It's going to give me negative 5. Okay, and now we're going to do minus 2 times minus 5. Well, 2 times 5 gives me 10. And a minus times a minus gives me a positive. And we can see 10 does equal 10. So that's checked it and it does work out. So whichever way you want to do that, you can do it uh, as we did the last method where we expand the bracket first, or you can get rid of the negative four. Remember that's multiplying, so we need to do the inverse. So we're gonna divide by negative four that's going to give me x minus 4 equals 4 goes into 28 7 times positive and a negative gives me a negative then I'm going to get rid of the positive the negative 4 by adding okay and then x on its own will equal minus 7 add 4 and again if it helps to just draw your number line I'm at minus 7. Remember if I add I always go to the right. I'm getting closer to 0. So minus 6, minus 5, minus 4, minus 3. I've gone 4 steps. 1, 2, 3, 4. So my answer would be minus 3. I hope that made sense. And uh, check out the next video.